Hello everyone, we're going to use some PowerPoint slides from chapter 5 to review, go over uh, how to use the accounting equation. Now, it's not just going to be the formula for the balance sheet. We know that a balance sheet has assets, liabilities, owner's equity. Well, now we want to look at the accounting equation as a tool for measuring what's happening with the company. So we're going to try to take events and what we're we're going to call it transactions that the business does, business decisions, if you will, hearkening way back to uh, our first chapter when, when we talked about businesses making decisions. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to translate those business events, those decisions, into accounting language, into changes to the accounting equation, keeping it in balance so that we make sure we don't miss anything so that we can communicate the results of those transactions to the readers, to the users of the financial information. So let's dive in and, and see how we're going to do that. So quick review. We know that assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. We know that the formula for the income statement are revenues minus expenses plus or minus gains and losses equals net income and that that net income changes retained earnings which is part of stockholders equity which goes on the balance sheet so there's this this circle if you will uh, as they changes to one change others as we discussed back in chapter three a little bit so we're going to make a chart of an accounts of the things that we want to track. It is simply a list of those items, those assets, those liabilities, et cetera, that we want to track the changes to. So we have to decide how detailed we want to be. Do we want to have a whole lot of different expenses or do we want to lump them together and kind of uh, summarize? So do we want lots of different assets or do we want just a few in terms of categories of assets. So we want to have two trucks and, and cars separate, or do we want to do vehicles together? Do we want to do buildings and land separate? Or do we want to do them together? That sort of thing. So the FASB does not tell us, the rules are not spe do not specify what you need to track, what assets you need to use, what liabilities, what revenues, what expenses. You could have a whole lot, hundreds and hundreds of different accounts on our list of chart of accounts. And each item that we want to track is, is going to refer to as an account. Okay. We could, we could have it each asset, individual asset could be a, an account. For instance, uh, our building on Main Street could be one account that we track and our building on the other side of town could be a different account, or we could lump them together in buildings, okay? Uh, so it just depends on how much detail we want to uh, communicate. But in our chart of accounts, we will like to keep assets with assets, expenses with expenses, liabilities with liabilities. We want to group them in the list according to their type. So again, important to remember what they are. And then as we grow as a business, we add more things we want to track, uh, then we know where to put that account or that item we want to track on our chart of accounts. We'll put it with the others of its, the same type. Now, when we are naming accounts, when we are tracking these and tr identifying what they are and where they belong, there's some general rules that we can follow. There's no way to make a comprehensive list of every possible thing we want to track. However, there are some things we can try to will help us remember. Receivable means asset, something you're going to get in the future future benefit. That's the definition of an asset. Payable is 
almost always going to be a liability. It means that we have to pay it out. We owe somebody cash. Prepaid means that we're gonna we pay for something now. We're gonna receive it in the future. So it's usually an asset, even if it's paired up with the expense. Unearned means we receive cash now and we have to provide services later. Or it could be that we have to provide goods later. So someone pays for something in advance, custom item or something like that. Accrued is the term that goes along with owed. So the term crude wages is the same as wages payable. Accrued means owed, owed wages, wages payable, which is the same as wages owed. So they, it's a liability. Crude is usually used along with the, in the, li, with the liability to describe uh, what we're tracking in liabilities. Def earned is usually goes along with the revenue. Deferred means something later. So it could be associated with either assets or with deferred revenue, which is the same as unearned revenue. So you're going to have to look for another clue if you see this or come across the word deferred if you want. So generally, we don't utilize that term a lot in the beginning uh, levels of accounting because uh, but you will see it as you read financial statements because it's not as clear as we might like. So here is what we refer to as the expanded accounting equation. It means we've broken assets in the current long term, broken liabilities in the current long term. We've broken stockholders equity into capital and retained earnings. But then we've taken retained earnings and we have put underneath it revenues, expenses, gains and losses, and dividends. And just to make it a little easier to work with, we put gains and losses in the same column. So what we're doing here is we want to illustrate that as we make changes to these, we need to keep this accounting equation in balance. If there's a change on the asset side, it also needs to change on the liability stockholders equity side. And you look at all of the things we could have change on the liabilities and equity side, especially. You got current liabilities, long-term liabilities, capital stock, revenues, expenses, gains and losses, dividends, and then each one of those could be further broken down into more accounts. It could have different current as liabilities, different long-term liabilities, different types of revenue, different expenses, and they would go under these columns and they could be broken into more and more detailed pieces. You can see that if you have lots and lots of accounts, this accounting equation could qu very quickly become very, uh, very long you know, across your screen. Uh, we don't utilize this uh, except for illustration purposes because it gets very cumbersome. It can handle very simple things, and that's what we're trying to do. Is we're learning the process that is actually done in accounting software in real life. But if you you need to understand, be able to picture what's happening in that software. So changes to these assets, liabilities, and so forth, okay, are tracked in the columns below the headings or the account names. So we might break liabilities into two accounts. Accounts payable under current liabilities and unearned revenue. And then we would say if we did something on that transaction that increased accounts payable, we would have an increase of a certain amount in that column. All right, so each account, if you will, could be a column under these main headings. So if we're gonna start dealing now, not just with on our midterm exam, we dealt with amounts that we already knew. They were given to us. Now we're talking about how do we get to those amounts? How did we go from having zero assets to having, because every business starts with zero assets, to the number of assets and the kinds of assets we show on the balance sheet. So 
everything needs to change. And that's what we're trying to measure and communicate to our investors. So there's really only four ways that we could have a change to an asset account. We can either exchange one asset for another. So one asset is going to go up and the other asset is going to go down. So total assets stay the same, but individual assets shift around. We could obtain an asset by incurring a liability. That would mean our assets go up and our liabilities go up by the same amount. We buy something on credit. We lease equipment. We get the equipment as an asset. We owe the full amount of that to the lender. The stockholders could give us cash or other assets, or we could give them cash in the form of dividends or other assets. So that's another way that the assets could change, could go up or down with stockholders. That's going to be pretty more rare. The dividends can happen a couple of times a year, but not on an every, every other day basis, every day basis, like an ex, the first two happen. Or we can earn the, more assets by providing goods or services. And that's what we hope to be able to do, right? We sell something and receive either cash or a promise to pay later, which is an accounts receivable, still an asset. Okay. And because we sell inventory that we bought for $2, we sell for four, then what we've done is we've exchanged an asset that we had that cost us two for our accounts receivable or cash that's four. That's it's sort of like an exchange, except for it's for more. We get four. That's why it, we earned it and gave up something that cost us two. I mean, that's kind of the idea of retail uh, business. We bought it for one price and we sell it for a higher price uh, to make a profit. If liabilities are going to change, then we only really have three, three things that change liabilities. Okay. Um, well, the first two are kind of together. You either obtain a liability, incur a liability, obtain an asset, or pay back that liability. So we buy stuff on credit. So we have inventory, we have accounts payable. And then when we pay it off, we, we reduce our cash and we reduce the liability by the same amount. So it kind of uh, works and it's really the extension of this a chain and asset by incurring a liability that we did on the assets uh, slide. We could also have an expense that we have incurred or used now, but we're going to pay for later. So our expenses are going to go up, which makes our owner's equity go down and our liabilities, because we owe the money, go up. Or we receive cash for something we haven't done yet. So we actually increase our cash and increase our liabilities because we owe the customer something. Now, going back to our expanded carding equation, notice that expenses all right are subtracted so any additional expenses are going to make retained earnings go down any losses make retained earnings go down any payment of dividends makes retained earnings go down that's why there's a subtraction for each one of those additional revenues is going to make retained earnings go up Okay, gains are going to make retained earnings go up. And if retained earnings goes up, stockholders' equity goes up. So just a reminder that expenses, losses, and dividends are subtracted. So when we say that expenses went up, we're 
referring, we're actually to talking about retained earnings going down. Now, a little sidebar about revenue recognition. We talked about this principle in Chapter 2. Uh, the FASB gave us some additional guidance as to how revenue, how to know when there's a revenue and put it on the income statement. So we talked about assets. We talked about liabilities. What changes those? Now we're talking about revenues. And then we'll talk about expenses. Okay? Revenue... To have a revenue, there needs to be an agreement and a contract between a customer and our business. There has to be things that are agreed to in that uh, contract. The contract does not have to be in writing. It can be a verbal contract. It could be a handshake. But there has to be an agreement. Okay? We need to identify in that agreement what it is that we're supposed to do for the customer. Because if we don't know what we're supposed to do, we don't know when things have been earned. So we look at this agreement and we say, okay, these are the things that we must do for the customer in the, according to the contract. Then there should be some understanding of the contract such that we know how much the price is. What is going to be paid for those things that we're, we're going to provide. We're going to have to look at that at a most likely scenario. What is the most likely amount that's going to be paid? So lots of businesses negotiate all kinds of different discounts and bonuses and all that sort of thing. All of those things need to go into determining what is the most likely amount that's going to be paid. If everybody we sell to um, gets the volume gets a volume discount of five percent then when we sell something record revenue it should be based on 95 percent of the the price that's listed in our catalog because that's what everything everybody happens okay everybody gets the discount if it's only for some people and we have to estimate that as well then we allocate so if there are three things we're supposed to do to earn that to get paid that amount then we have to allocate. So how much of that price is for the first thing we do? And how much is for that price is for the second thing? And how much for that price is for the third thing? Then as we do those three things, we record revenue according to how we allocated. So if we allocated half of the contract price to the first thing we had to do because it required more work than the others then we would record revenue of half of what we received after we'd done one of the performance obligations whatever it was that we were required to do and then we could allocate the the next bunch of revenue to when we re when we finish the second obligation and then so forth the third obligation so it may spread out when we complete it. Now, if there's only one performance obligation, if there's only one thing we're doing, then it makes it relatively straightforward to know when to recognize the revenue. Whenever we do that one thing, then it should be uh, ready to go, okay? On the expense side, When do we record expenses? When do we put those on the income statement? Well, the most obvious, I mean, that's what they are. They're costs to earn revenue. That's the definition of an expense. So we can do that when the, we match the revenues. That's one of the matching principles we learned that earlier, as earned. So cost of goods sold is an example of matching the revenue. When we sell, um, flashlights to our customer we would record the cost of those flashlights as cost of goods sold that's matching the flashlight cost with the flashlight revenue that's how we match revenues to expenses or expenses to revenues however you want to think about it sometimes it's not quite so obvious sometimes we've just used up something we've just used utilities i can't tell you that uh, the lights on in the grocery store helped you sell green beans or it helped you sell stuff in the deli. It has to be on for everything. But 
as you use that, you can't go back and use it again. The lights get used, the utility gets used, the repairs get used, the rent gets used, and then it's gone. Sometimes we're going to have an expense because we first had an asset. We bought an asset and then we used it up. A used up asset becomes an expense because the benefit in the future becomes in the past. And then the worst kind of ones are... Those that are kind of unexpected reduction in future benefit, okay, that we may run across. Maybe something happened to one of our assets and it becomes obsolete, okay. Um, it's broken. It becomes no longer viable. It uh, gets hit by lightning, whatever. Those are uh, expenses that don't really fit the others, but are still clearly a used up benefit. So if you look at this accounting equation and how to prepare the financial statements, we're going to stop right there and, and move this to a second video where we can spend a little more time on this.